And the question is, what's, what is actually FFI? Allow me to read the Wikipedia definition. A foreign function interface, FFI, is a mechanism by which a program written in one programming language can call routines or make use of services written in another. But well, this is, it's copied from, from the Wikipedia, so it's book definition. The real question should be, what problems does FFI solve? Well, it's if you, for example, want to reuse some code which has been only written, but in completely different programming language. For example, you have a nice connector to, to database written, in, for, for example, in C, and you want to use it. You simply don't want to write this uh, in PHP. Or you find out that in some different programming language you can solve your problems much more faster. So what about all, all things um, developing this programming language from PHP? Or you simply want to do something which is not supported in the language, which can be a lot of the things in the case of PHP. And you may be saying, ah, maybe we can already do all of this with the help of PHP extensions. And your center will right. But still, FFI has some, some few advantages. For example, its usage, it's simpler because you, you don't lack PHP. You don't need to install any, any tool chains, any compilers. Also, the maintenance and deployment is a little bit easier because you can use your current deployment process or your current maintenance uh, processes. Also, the code can be a little more portable, but only if we, if we connect it with the, with the Zend API, which is the internal API by which the PHP extension is communicated with the PHP. This, a, this API is usually break across the, ma the major PHP version, so you have to redevelop your extensions or change it, or at least recompile it. You don't need to do this with FFI. Also, one of the questions can be that we actually don't need a, a, to learn a new programming language because the, the extensions are usually written in the C or in the C++. So you maybe don't, don't need to uh, know these languages. We will see about this. Also, FFI has some kind of limitations if you compare it with extensions. You don't have any easy way how to modify uh, how the PHP internally work. Because with the help of PHP extensions, such as, for example, Xdebug, you can intercept what is, do, what is done inside the, the PHP core. This is simply not possible with, a, with the help of FFI. At least there is not an easy way how to do it. Also, extensions tend to be faster uh, because they are written in the compiled language, so there is no, no overhead when you, for example, dynamically calling something. And the FFI supports usually just one target language, and very often is a C, as this is some kind of the common language. And well, what is the state of FFI in, in PHP 7.4? Well, it's a brand new extension, because a lot of new functional functionality in PHP is actually written in the form of extensions nowadays. Uh, it's part of the core, so it will be always available. It's more mature than an existing solutions, because there has been attempt to bring FFI into PHP, but all of them simply go astray. Also, it's multi-platform, so yes, you can use it even under the windows, which is quite quite interesting. <laughs> Didn't actually expect in this, and it's maintenance. At least for now, we will see in the future. And uh, uh, one issue is that it allows only calling as C libraries. And the more, one of the most important questions, how to use it? Well, I will demonstrate this on the, on the ABS function, which simply returns the absolute value of the number. Well, this is something for which you usually don't use FFI, because we already have this, this function in the PHP. But still, it's, it's quite a nice example, at least for the beginning. Well, so, here we have a basic example. If I remove all the formatting, it will be I can put it just on the two lines. And uh, I will now explain both of the lines. Well, uh, there is new class of FFI, which has, uh, which has a static method cdef. This creates a new FFI object. And first argument of this static method are the declaration in C language, which you put there. there are, these are the declaration of function which you want to use it. And the second argument is the name of shared libraries from which you actually want to call it, uh, this code. So in this case, I will try to uh, use a PS function from the standard C library. 
this example is specially tailored to, to Linux. But I think that this is not, not an issue nowadays because well, there is a Docker everywhere. So you certainly can, can run this even at home. Uh, about the function definition. As, as PHP is uh, a CLI-like language, the function definitions are quite similar. Uh, there, there are a few differences, of course. Uh, for example, the, the return type in C is usually before the, the function name. And also you have to provide the, the data types for our arguments or for its written value. So here you have some, some comparison. And how we, how we call this function? Well, we have an instance of FFI object and we just call the, the defined function by its name and provide all important parameters. So in this case, you can see that for minus 42, uh, the, the absolute value of minus 42 is 42. One important observation in this area is that the simple data types are automatically converted. You don't need to do anything. So all numbers, they will be simply converted into its uh, C, C counterparts. Well, but this still does not guarantee that the right function will be called. Because well, the, the ABS function in standard C library access on the teacher. So if we try to, to pass uh, number uh, which is out of the range of C integer, the value will simply overflow and we don't uh, receive a right value. So we, we have to be cautious and always choose a right C function in, in this case. This can be a little bit confusing at the beginning. So far this, this was about the simple types. But well, there are also, also an arrays in C, so you will uh, definitely Definitely, you will have to work with them. And I have an, an example here, uh, which is trying to sort an array with the help of quick sort of algorithm. I again have here a, a signature. And the first, first very interesting thing is that parameter uh, in in which we in in which we so try to provide an, an array is something a little bit strange that we that we actually don't have any PHP and it's void asterisk. Well, this is, this is, oh sorry, this is actually a pointer. So, yeah. And we will, we will be a little bit naive and we will try to pass a, a regular PHP array into this function. And we will quickly find out that this simply won't work. There will be a fatal error. PHP will tell us, well, I am expecting a, a void asterisk. And I found PHP type array. Oh, so yeah, brace yourself. Pointers are coming to a PHP conference. <laughs> so, what is the pointer? Well, it's a variable that stores uh, the memory address of another variable located in computer memory. Well, we don't have a pointers in PHP because if we have it, you can actually know this. And what is a little bit uh, unfortunate in this area that arrays and strings in C are always passed or returned as a pointers. So you will simply have to deal it. So how we will change our example? Well, we will have to provide a pointer. How we will do this? Well, we will have to construct a special type of the array, uh, an IT, uh, a native C, C array. With the Again, with the help of FFI, uh, there is a, a static method new for this. You simply uh, pass to this method a C, C definition of array. In this case, uh, it's a simple array, simple integer array with, with two elements. And you can work with this array in the regular manner, as, as, as with the regular PHP arrays. There are, of course, few differences something which I personally call a C rules. The array which you create this way has a fixed size, so, so you cannot easily change its size. It allows only integer index. And also there is, for example, a, a bound checking is missing there, which can be quite confusing. And so we construct this array to work with him in the regular PHP manner. Uh, we set some volume into it, and then we pass into the pixel value. But before that, uh, we will have to obtain a pointer. And we will do this by the help of static method FFF, uh, ADDR on the FFI object. 
So this builds a per uh, return the pointer, and we can then pass it in, into the pixel function, and the function will sort the array for us. Well, another complex data type is a string. Basically, a string is just an, an array of, of, of charms. So it's pretty much uh, pretty much same to to regular array in this. So here I have uh, I chosen as an example function strtalk, which simply split the string into tokens by given pattern. We have quite similar fun well quite similar. We actually have the same function in the PHP because a lot of the, the P a lot of the functions in standard PHP library are just the same wrappers around standard C library because this is the way how the PHP uh, starts. So in this case. Uh, I can also expect a pointer, but at this moment it's a pointer to character. And how I will call this function? It starts to be a little bit interesting and confusing at the same moment, because the data conversion in, in this case is partial. So we, will, so we actually can provide a regular PHP string and send it into the function. This can be something that you probably don't expect, because when you previously uh, working with uh, uh, with the pointers in uh, in the PHP FFI, you have to create some some proxy objects, but not in this case. In this case, it will be converted automatically. But the issue is that this is just for the input parameters. For any parameters which uh, or parameter which will be uh, written from the method, this simply don't work this way. So if I try to split some input parameters and then I work with the output. I realize that instead of uh, instead of uh, string, Vada returns me some kind of the proxy object. In this case, this proxy object is just pointing to uh, to the uh, to the pointer. So I will have to use a helper method, which is uh, again on the FFI object called string, and this will convert the string into a regular PHP string, and then I can work with this. This string in, in a regular manner. Here is the complete example. The slides will be online, so there is no no need for photographing this. You will definitely have an option to to try all of these examples later. Uh, another complex data, data types are structures. We don't have structures in PHP. We have something which is a little bit similar. It's called set class, I guess. And the structures are kind of like of objects. But they simply don't have a method. So in this, so in this case, I define a structure called hook. And this this structure has a two properties. One of is title of the book, and the second one is ID of the book. And then I just set an element in, into the structure. This uh, this example is taken from it is the C code, so something which you can do in the PHP. But they still have to be some way how to interact through the PHP FFI with the structure. And I will demonstrate this on another function which we have in PHP. And this time, uh, this time it's the, the entire time function, uh, which simply takes some, some arguments, such as, for example, day amounts, and creates the next timestamp from it. And pretty much sure that all, almost everybody uses this function at least one time in, in its life. So uh, you can expect here a structure. And how we will work with this structure in PHP? Well, we have to provide a definition in this case. So I, I actually copied this, this definition from standard C, uh, C, C library from its other files. And when I, put, when I put it with the, with the rest of the method definitions to the, to the CDF function, I can then use it with the help of method view. So I simply uh, uh, call the method view and uh, said, yeah, I want to have a new instance of structure tn. And then I will work with the structure in the same way as I'm working with the regular PHP object. So it gets set elements, answer to them. So it's pretty much like a regular PHP object. Then in this case, I again, because I'm calling my time function and it's expecting a pointer to, to this object, I have to use method FFI ADDR to, to do this. So here is again a co complete example. 
Well, I was talking about the pointers, and it's the time to uh, to address and pick a left in the room, actually, and that's the memory management. Because the memory management of PHP and its programs are quite different from the memory model of PHP. We are actually quite lucky in PHP, because PHP is a memory safe language with a garbage collector implemented in the form of reference counting and garbage collector algorithm. So we simply don't have to take any care of the memory. We don't have to clean up after ourselves. We just have to be sure that our program doesn't eat too much memory. It's quite simple in this case. But on the other side in C, you will, you will have to deal with a lot of other things, such as, for example, a manual, a manual memory management pointers, which I already told you. And there can be some direct memory manipulations. And this quite often br uh, brings a lot of the trouble. The good news is that the PHP HFI is trying to at least partially manage the memory for us. So any objects that you create with a, with a new method are by default managed by the PHP. Uh, they're so-called owned. But unfortunately, this is not enough. And there can be some areas in which you have to be cautious. These are, for example, the C, the C pointer, which you obtain by the help of, of, of ADD method, and individual elements of C arrays and structures. And actually, the most data structures which will be written from, from the colored C function. So, well, it's pretty much almost every, every area in which you have to be cautious. And I will start with, with the C pointers. Uh, I actually uh, show how to use them. And the issue is that they are not owned. Um, what does this mean in practice, in, in, in the real life? Well, we can have so-called dangling pointer, which is the pointer that, that uh, doesn't point into valid variable, it point into some, some garbage value. And this can quite easily happen when you try to reference something that, is, that has been already destroyed, that has been answered. But you have still pointed to, to, this, um, to its memory location. Oh, and I have uh, an interesting example here. Uh, what I'm trying to achieve, achieve in, this, uh, in this piece of code. I'm trying to create a TM structure inside a function and I set some value in, into this structure, into one of its properties. And then I simply return, uh, return a pointer to this structure. And then I simply want to work with, uh, with, with the return variable. So I, for example, call a bar down on this. And what is quite interesting when I run the, this part of the, the code, the bar down will print rubbish or simply crash the script. You can just toss a coin because its, it's behavior is a little bit um, undefined in this case. And what actually happened here? Well, we create some, some C structure which is owned by PHP, uh, but then we try to, uh, but then we obtain a pointer, and PHP doesn't know that we that we obtain a pointer, but it knows that we don't want to work with the time, uh, with the time, with the instance of time structure. So it simply automatically removes time structure from the memory because it's, it's in the function, so it cannot be accessed. It simply doesn't know that we, we that we still have a pointer to to it. So this, is the, so this is the case of the dangling pointer. So if, if you encounter anything similar in the regular PHP without the FFI, you will simply think, yeah, this is the bug in, in the PHP. But in this case, because there is an, an FFI pointer, uh, it's simply a feature. <laughs> also, if you create some, some PHP arrays, in this case, for example, a multidimensional array, you try to set up some values. Then you simply uh, uh, set some of these values into another values and answer its parent value. You will have quite similar mm, similar issue because uh, the, the elements of, of individual C arrays are also not formed. So this is another area in which you have to be cautious. Another thing is when you try to pass some some values in the PHP or when you are working with the return values. Uh, because well, there are two ways uh, how to 
uh, work, especially with, uh, with the values in, in, uh, in the C. You can return them by value. This is the, the for example, integer and the simple other times, or as a pointer, which is the case for, for arrays and string. There are, there are always paths or, or return as a pointers. And well, when you working with the Python string in, in the PHP FFI, you must ask yourself who actually allocates and deallocates memory. Well, sometimes it's, it's PHP FFI, but sometimes it's a function which you're actually calling. And now, uh, and then it starts to be quite quite interesting again, because from the point of PHP programmer, you simply cannot uh, return uh, array from C function without without implications. And again, I have an example for this. In this case, I will try to call um, method, method block with the help of FFI. Method block is, is fi try to find all past names which are matching a specific pattern. So in this case, this simple PHP example will, will return are, uh, all files or directories in, uh, in, in the run directory of the script. Now I will try to, to rewrite it with the with help of FFI. The, the definition in this case is it's, it's still quite simple. I have some, some, some data structure which will be filled, and then I have a two, two methods, glob and glob3. I will discuss them on the next slides. So how I will actually call, call the glob function? There is Nothing, nothing very interesting. All of these things are, are already explained, so I will create a, a new structure, pass a pointer to, to this function. What is actually interesting is how I get the result. As I call the, the result object by, uh, by pointer, I, I will have all, all its data in, in, this, in, in the result variable. And in this result variable, the, uh, the, there is the defined structure with the two important properties: uh, geo underscore pass c, which contains the noun, from, uh, which contains a count of count items, and count items itself in the array gl uh, underscore pa pass p. So I can then simply tra traverse it and, for example, print it. This motion. And at the end of the script, I actually have to call a uh, function which will free the memory for me, which will do all the other cleaning after I call the glob function. And this is the glob free function in this case. And the question is because you simply don't need to do this in the regular PHP. So you might ask why, uh, why we have to do this. Issue is that we don't know in advance how many things will, uh, will be found. How many items are on the file system in this case. So PHP cannot allocate the memory for the result object in advance. So it's simply delegated to, to the call function. And the function called this, well, it simply depends on its implementation. So the function also have to provide, uh, it's, uh, I can call it a sister function, which will uh, free the memory in, in, a real, in, in a reliable way in this case. And if I simply don't call the glob free function, well, I will have a memory leak in this case. So virtually at the first time, nothing will happen. But if, this, if the script will uh, run for the load time, it will simply deplete all memory which has been given to, to the PHP process. And it will crash. So here is again a complete example. Well, uh, one thing that, that, that I was telling in the beginning, that one of the reasons why I I want to use PHP FFI, it's performance. Because, well, there can be some, some problems which you, which, which to which the solution can be faster than C. So I actually do, my, uh, do some bench, benchmarkings if it will bring a better performance. But before that, well, I, I return an RFC document to, to PHP FFI in which the author of this PHP extension uh, said that actually the accessing of the FFI data structure is uh, it's a slower, two times slower, and there is a still some some overhead from the dynamic calling and the marshalling. And uh, he generally recommended to call on a big chance of C code. So as I said, I do my my own benchmarks, 
a nice part with the ABS function. The time for parsing C definition is not included. So it's just that I have an, a prepared FFI object and I call an ABS function on it. And uh, the ABS function called through the FFI is about three times slower. So it definitely doesn't make any sense. You simply won't, um, won't make uh, program any faster when you call ABS functions uh, through the FFI. I do the same for the block function. And in this case, it's just uh, 1.1 1, 1 .1 times slower. So the difference isn't so big in this area as I am calling a bigger chunk of the C code. Of course, there are a few issues about this because my uh, my block, my implementation of the block function is a multi-platform. There aren't any additional checks. Mm -hmm. So still, if I if I implement it in the in the same manner as a block function is implemented in in the PHP, it can be a little bit. Uh, it, it will be slower. But still, it's a pretty good example that you should call on a big chunk of C code. So, so after all of this, it's actually FFI worth it? Does it make two sense to, to use it? As you can see that a lot of the things are, are paid in the ass. You also realize that you actually need a solid knowledge of, of C language, because if you don't know it, there are so, so many things which you can screw up. You can very easily answer with, not even with, uh, with the memory leads, but for example, with the segmentation fault, etc. The C is definitely unforgiving. You can shoot yourself, you can shoot yourself in the foot in very multiple ways. Uh, and what is also interesting, um, I presented on, on the example of the function and pointer, it, it changed the ways how some basic things in PHP works. Also, if you use it wrongly, it will simply lead into the server crashes or the script crashes. You don't have any guarantee that there will be an instant performance boost. You can do quite nice um, things, some, some black magic with it. But I'm pretty much sure that the PHP is magical language by, by itself, even without the help of FFI. And also, it can quite easily become a security nightmare. Because you can corrupt a, a, a memory of running PHP process, and if you simply allow any, uh, any, any remote user to, to export FFI, you have a bigger problem than, than you have with, with, with a whole function. So it can be a security nightmare. Well, on the other side, all, almost all programming language has, has some kind of built in FFI mechanism. For example, Python, Ruby, etc. All of all of them have some kind of these uh, these classes and this implementation. And it's quite easy way how to prototype things. If you, for example, decide that you want to try some, something for which you don't have a uh, PHP extension, uh, you can very easily prototype things with it and. You can, during the development, find out if it's really worth it and then, for example, write an extension in the pussy. So I can say it's definitely fun, but only until someone gets hurt. <laughs> so then, now it's time for a question. Or you can go uh, to grab a lunch and ask later. I will be definitely around here. Oh, I'm also sure if I can toss to thank you, or if we should pass a microphone. See? Does it work? <laughs> ah? I'm presuming that it simply doesn't work. So do we have, do we have a microphone? Uh, I have a question. Can you go back to this your, your Q sort example? Because uh, there, the one thing you need to pass also is a compare function. How do you pass a function inside it? Thank you for that. Uh, this is an interesting question. Is it the one? Yes. Here we are. This is 
fine with this thing. You just need to pass a regular PHP callback. And everything will be done automatically. Yeah, but this is a kind of strange. And it actually has a lot of the, lot of the implications because the, the support for this isn't perfect. It isn't supported on some platforms. I don't know on which one because the, this, this simply wasn't provided. Also, it will officially lead into the memory leak because the PHP FFI is not able to free this function. So that's kind of strange that this type of the function they actually made into the PHP core. Because, well, uh, you can very really easily create a, a memory leak and there is no workaround around this. And this, uh, this actually have a great, great implication. Because the first thing that I wanted to do with FFI was to bind a GTK toolkit for creating a graphic user interface in PHP. But very often all of these implementations of, of, of any graphic user interface I based around some, some event loop to which you pass callbacks. So this will, this will eventually lead into in to inability to use FFI for this, which actually was one of the first, so one of the first thing for which I was thinking, yeah, maybe this is the right by thing for which you can use FFI. So does the group work now? And is there any other question? Hello. So thanks for your talk. Um, just a quick question. Obviously, you mentioned about hanging pointers and, and dereferenced pointers and that sort of thing. When the PHP scripts ends, will they then be cleaned up like we do with file pointers, or will they still just sit in memory until ad infinitum? <laughs> Excellent question. They, uh, they will be actually free because the, the, the PHP still uh, still have a link to them, if I can say it in this plain words. So it, it will be free on the end of the PHP execution. Okay, thank you. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> It's not to be quite fun, I guess. <laughs> um, right, my question is, uh, how do you test your code written in C in PHP? <laughs> this, is the good, this is the good question. <laughs> uh, so we basically don't test it, right? Uh, well, I actually don't, don't use it in the track. Uh, I don't have any uh, real usage for, for it now. It was uh, uh, in, in the beta and in, and in the release candidate, I guess. So uh, I don't have any, any real usage for this. But I, I'm pretty much sure that I will write a unit test for this and will in some, some way work. But I guess that the good question in this era, now the better one, will be how I actually debug it. Debug it. Because well, the rules are, are a little bit uh, different. I mean, for example, try, try to debug a, a regular PHP code and then a PHP code which is pulling some C function. So uh, uh, there, there won't be any big issues uh, with the testing, but, with, but definitely with the debugging. Uh, yeah, actually, you've covered also my second question. Thank you. <laughs> so any other question? Okay, so I guess that will be released and you can go and grab a lunch. <coughs>